Hello everyone, today I will be talking about Neja, but before I do that, I want to make you fully understand why I am such a big fan of Neja. So what frame will you take when you have very tough targets? I am talking about bosses for the most part, but since I can't really spawn a boss fight at Simulacrum to show you the results in test conditions, I will tell you this much. You know these? These are one of Silver Grove Spectres. To be precise, Oberon Spectre is the one that can be spawned by Sunrise Apothic. You can scan them and when fully scanned, you can spawn them here. So what I want you to do is spawn 20 of them and then try to kill them all head on. I want a frame that can take a hit and also deliver a hit. But since the purpose is a boss killer, I will have to exclude all the warframes that deal damage through their abilities directly. A good chunk of bosses are either completely immune because you have to hit specific spots on them or have some ridiculous resistances to abilities. So no Mesa, no Baruch. Are you insects? Even trying? Too easy. I expected more. I deserve a challenge. I would say level 120 is the standard quote unquote end game level for this specific enemy. But if you are not quite there yet, you can try a lower level, something like 80 to 100 should do. You might think it is an easy task, but let me go through a few warframes for ya. So the frame we want must be super tanky and also must be able to buff their own damage output. Being resistant to knockback is a huge positive as well. You would actually be surprised how few warframes meet the criteria. So for test purposes, I will only use a Nekana Prime and that will be our standard. But for an actual boss fight, it is not always a good pick and sometimes something like Strofa is a much better pick and other times a Rubico Prime or a Velocitus might be a better pick. Gara, Gauss and Wukong. All three have decent survivability and all three also have some form of increasing their DPS but sadly none of their damage increases are quite potent enough so hard skip on these. Now let's talk Rhino. Rhino is obviously a top option. What? What? The problem with Rhino and killing tough targets is that the iron skin doesn't have an absorption multiplier. Meaning that if the enemy deals a constant 10k damage per second and you cast iron skin, you will absorb for 3 seconds and that amount is just gonna be enough for another 3 seconds since it doesn't get multiplied and you don't get any invincibility period when it runs out either. So every few seconds iron skin will run out and you will get absolutely demolished because your shields won't fully recharge in that short of a time. And besides, even if they did, you would just constantly be recasting iron skin just not to die. And that is no boss killer in my book. For future reference, remember that his damage buff will be a 2.5 times multiplier at 300% strength. Chroma is also a frame that comes to mind when thinking about high damage and also being able to take a hit. Let's see how effective he is. And as you can see, you will get obliterated by these guys. And also, his damage buff? It's a lot weaker compared to multiplier types like Mirage, Rhino, and Maboy Neja because it's serration type damage and not multiplication. Before I talk about Neja, I will have to mention how freaking effective Nova is. She can't exactly deal the damage or survive, but she can make everything take double damage and slow them by 75% for about 18 seconds, which is a massive advantage. So even though she can't do it by herself, if the enemy is tough enough, she is a must have in the squad. Now let's talk about my boy Neja. 
He fits all the criteria needed to be an absolute boss. With a roar helmet put on his one, he has literally the highest damage buff in game at 7.6 times with 300% strength. For reference, Mirage's damage buff is 6 times at the same strength. He can take a hit and unlike Mr. Rhino over there, he has an absorption multiplier. With 3 second invincibility, the absorption multiplier is 7.5 times at 300% strength of course. Even if enemy deals a constant damage per second, for example let's say 10k damage per second, your damage reduction will last for 22.5 seconds and will give you 3 second invincibility at both the start and the end, making your survivability per cast at 28.5 seconds which is a lot of time. And the kicker is, you will be immune to both status effects and knockbacks while it's active. His damage buff comes from Roar and Blazing Chakram. Unlike most duration based abilities, bosses can't actually reduce Blazing Chakram's duration and it will have full 15 second duration on base no matter who your enemy is. So let's see how effective the boss actually is. And here is the build. Of course, this is a double umbral build, which let's say is a little bit overkill. You might remember that I did say that I do not like using umbral mods because they kill build diversity, and I also do not like them because the benefit they give is very minuscule. Keep in mind that spending 2 Umbral Forma, all I got was 36% extra ability strength. I mostly did this because Neja is my favorite Warframe and I also wanted to show you how little of an effect Umbral Forma actually has. So don't fall for it, you don't need to use Umbral Forma. If he is your favorite Warframe like mine, sure, go for it. But for the effort that it took me to get 2 Umbral Forma, let me tell you, it's not worth it. It is definitely not worth it, okay? okay. Oh, I also forgot to mention I had to drop adaptation for Umbral Fiber, which you might think it's not a big deal as plus armor is also survivability, right? That's the thing though. 
the older build had 90% DR ability, another 90% from adaptation, and another 80% with base armor plus arcane guardian, which all adds up to 99.8% damage reduction. And with 925 health, our EHP or effective HP was at 462,000, which is almost half a million. However, by changing adaptation to umbral fiber to get the set benefit, we have the 90% from ability, no adaptation, and the 84% from the total armor, base, mods, and arcane guardian together, which adds up to a 98.4% damage reduction. Which you might think it's pretty close, being only 1.4% less when talking about numbers in the 90s. But that couldn't be further from the truth. With a total HP of 1337, our EHP is just 83k. Which is 17% of the old build by the way. So you can see how little of an effect a plus armor mod actually has. However, if you change the umbral fiber for adaptation, your EHP will be at 531,000, which is a little more than the other build, but for my Neja, I want the maximum possible damage buff, so I won't do that. As a side note, umbral fiber will provide a serious boost to your Kavat's survivability at steel path material, so that's to consider. I could use energy conversion, given that Neja can make a decent amount of energy orbs, but in a boss fight, that doesn't really work, and for normal use, it doesn't come into play often enough to be worth it in my opinion. Now which I have shown you the best pick is Neja, now let me show you how much of a boss he actually is with this build. Roll the clips! Alrighty, thank you for watching the video, I just wanted to ask you what would you want me to make next because I have a lot of ideas, I could go for a big project next which would by the way take more time or I could focus on smaller videos, which one do you like? Would you like me to talk about Zephyr and her changes? Would you want to see a Necros build? You want the big project option then I could make a full railjack guide if you want that or I could show you how to mod. How to my primary, how to my secondary, how does the damage resistance work. If you want to see me make that, then tell me and I'll make it. If you want me to update the mod drop location video, tell me in the comments and I'll consider it. Thanks for watching again and bye bye.